first. So I'm um, for MEA at Sopra Banking. I'm head of innovation, and uh, currently we serve around 250 banks. So it's quite interesting what you said about the difficulties of fintechs and startups to work with banks. And I will try to explain how we help banks to work well and better with the with startups and fintechs. So first, I would like to start with. Si, je vais te le faire. Je dois juste écouter ce truc. Uh, I would like to start with the concept of disruption. In banks, bankers are not still aware about what kind of disruption they are going to, to live or to, to discover. Because as you said in the previous panel, with the previous panelists, uh, they are not ready or you, you said there is some bureaucracy. So what, one thing that we try to explain to banks is that look to other industries. Look to Deezer and Spotify who change music. Look to Airbnb who change uh, how we manage hotels. And you, I have taken an assessment of uh, uh, a senior VP of uh, Hospitality Venture. In 2014, he said, we have not seen a direct effect from Airbnb in any of our hotels. And today, things have changed. So in fact, with the COVID, maybe it's quite different, but the, the, the idea is the same. The, the industry of hotels has quite as uh, has really changed. If we take Uber, Netflix, also, if you remember Blockbuster, the CEO of Blockbuster said, "Neither Redbox or Netflix are even on the radar screen in terms of competition." Today, uh, they disappeared. So, in less than 12 years, uh, some um, big players have disappeared, disappeared. And I take the last example of Tesla. Who is, uh, uh, providing things or solutions that today all the market is trying to follow. So this is for the industry. And also what we explain is that if you take the, the market, look in 2016, who is driving the economy today is, is the technology. So from 2006 to 2016, in 10 years, we moved from um, oil companies, banks, to technology companies, Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, and even Facebook. So we call them the GAFA, but globally, they are leading the economy based on their uh, financial capacity. Also, the technology is now more easy to accept by mass market because the, the real thing is the mass market. So if you take in four years, Skype or even Twitter or Gmail took uh, in four years, they, they reached 100 and uh, uh, 23 million for Gmail, for instance. But if we look uh, for Facebook or WhatsApp, in the same period, they go very, very, very fast. So uh, in the previous, with the panelists, you talk about the USSD. So today, for example, WhatsApp is an alternative between the SMS and the mobile app. So it can be something that can accelerate the financial inclusion uh, without using necessary smartphone or at least only WhatsApp. And today WhatsApp can work on, on phones that are not very, very sophisticated. So how to explain this trend? Because if we look to all these companies, how they have been successful to go very fast on these topics. So first is the platform. What it means is if we look to some Gartner study, a platform, in fact, it, it's gathering Customers and ecosystem. So, fine tech startup is part of the ecosystem. Things today we don't think about the things, but IoT is very important. And then you have the system of the banks. And when you take all these uh, actors, in fact, you have in the middle a kind of platform that manage with intelligence all the data, the real time data that are shared uh, between the different uh, 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 actors. So, to go very fast. The banks today, they have their own information system platform, but they are not necessary the, in, the, in their last version. They cannot provide to startups or fintech APIs. <clears throat> That's maybe sometimes explained why they are not able to go fast when there is a very innovative project and they are not able to deliver it because their own platform are not necessary really. You have, so I said, customer, ecosystem platform, and IoT platform, and in the middle, you need to analyze and analyze the, this, uh, all this data. So here I go very fast, but just to explain all the use cases that you can find 
So when we talk about customers, we talk about multi-channels, e-commerce, customer apps, social networks. But when we talk to ecosystem, there is a strategy to build about ecosystem. But we, banks need to provide um, platforms to the ecosystem to embed them in their own ecosystem. So this is what is explaining how some technologies are going very fast. But when we zoom a little bit on the financial description, here there is a kind of a overview <coughs> of some uh, startups. Not, no one of them is African today, but who, who has been able to leverage and to raise funds all over the world. As you can see, they are focusing on, on really simple use cases, but they provide the best user experience <coughs> the, 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 uh, to, to, to their customer. That's why they, they can get a lot of customers very fastly. Globally, uh, these 60 startups uh, represent more than three, they raised more than $3 billion uh, since uh, seven years. So it gives you an idea of uh, <coughs> the kind of uh, uh, acceleration that banks are going to live. So for example, in Africa, they don't feel today uh, that there is any threat on them because there is no big fintech that uh, is treating them, but in Europe, they start to see this, like for example, Revolut or N26, that uh, start to have a lot of uh, customers and uh, have a lot of deposit from their customers. And uh, as we said also, you said in, in previously that regulation is helping. So in Europe, there is a regulation called Payment Service Directive Number no. 2, that's a lot, that um, oblige banks to open their own APIs to connect to customer account and to initiate payment. So it's uh, no more um, a matter of uh, if a bank wants or don't want to expose its own APIs, it's mandatory. So it means that regulation is obliging people to do things. You have also in UK the same approach. You have in Hong Kong um, the concept of a virtual license that today banks can have a virtual license. So it accelerates the digital and also for the US. So all this, if we take also the GAFA, so if you look to Amazon, Amazon, so they start with e-commerce and today they have a lot of platform. So Amazon is able to provide to banks uh, specialized services like Amazon Pay, Amazon Cash, Amazon Lending, Amazon uh, uh, Protect. Uh, we talked uh, about um, in the previous, with the previous panelists about insurance. So today Amazon, is saying to banks, you are not able to do the same level of services and uh, with the good level of technology. So I, I'm providing you the services. So this is uh, also another threat on the banking sector, like uh, Amazon or even Google, that will provide the same services. But the difference with banks is that they have, they know better their customer, they have a lot more data, and uh, they are able to use this, this data, which is not the case of banks. So what about banks, what they are doing? So first, if I speak a little bit about software banking software, today we have around 1,500 customers all over the world using our solutions with the, in 80 countries, and we are 5,000 experts in the, in, all over the world for this customer. And if I took Africa, we have around 900 experts located in Africa, we're covering 40 countries, and we have eight offices. And with our 300 customers, we look to this, uh, we are helping the bank to, to prepare themselves to this change and to go to an, an, a, new, a new area um, of banking. So we partner with main groups in Africa in, and we look to their digital transformation. And uh, we try to create value for Africa from Africa. So we have, that's why we participate the more and more to all, um, the, the different festival in order to, to catch some startups, some fintech, and try to accelerate, accelerate them. And so we consider ourselves that we are a digital enabler in Africa in order to help startups to work with banks because finally it's our solutions. So if our solutions are uh, working uh, uh, well and we, try, we are able to connect them to fintechs and startups, we help banks to do projects more fastly. So based on this, 
So what is the history, in fact, of banks? So banks 10 years ago or 20 years ago started with just e-banking. So today you said banks are not very fast, but 20 years ago, they started just with e-banking. They gave access to the customer account and you can initiate transaction. So in 20 years uh, ago, the main idea was how many times customers are connecting to our e-banking. So it was just a monthly connection to uh, the e-banking. So the, the challenges at this period was I have to show a modern image of the bank and I am just have to work on the multi-channel aspect of the bank. Ten years after, we moved to the online banking, meaning that there is more real-time transactions and bank try to sell new products via the online banking. And this time, we move from service service to a market model, meaning that we look weekly how customers are using the digital, solu the digital solutions. And here we are more focusing on the user experience and how we can generate new digital revenue. So in 2020, so the COVID was there, but uh, if we remove the COVID, the main idea was to move from online banking to open banking, because with open banking, you can integrate the fintechs, you can integrate the startups. So it means that banks have to include non-banking transactions, e-commerce e -commerce companies, for example, insurance, etc. And they have to build a, an ecosystem to leverage this ecosystem for their customer. So we move from a utilities to a, a, a utilities, utilities market model. And then we look on a daily basis how customer is using our apps. And then the main channel, channel, challenges of bank is to how they can provide innovative financial services, how they can be completely included in their customer journey. So this is the evolution of, of the bank. Uh, we observe it in, in Europe and to currently in Europe, uh, banks have, uh, sorry, um, banks uh, have reached the the level of open banking and the, for africa it's 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 just a starting so at super banking level what is the, the bank of the future so the bank of the future today banks customers when they open an account they trust the banks when to manage their money to provide loans and to manage their um, their, their cash but in the future what we think is that a bank can be a trusted advisor or a trusted third party that can manage not only the, the money, but al also can manage the data and can manage the identity. In the previous uh, discussion, you said the KYC is too long, etc. So generally, so if we trust the bank and we know that the KYC of the bank is very strong, it means that this identity can be shared with other industries and it will help uh, the, for instance, the financial inclusion. Also for the data, if you take all the digital data that you can find around, uh, uh, today banks cannot use it to know better their customer, to provide better uh, uh, products. And the second topic is about the sovereignty of the data. Today we talk about public cloud, we talk about uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. But in fact, there is a, a real topic about sovereignty of the data because if banks uh, in, in Africa accept to move to um, public cloud, it's a very risky for them for the next 15, 15 years. So there is another thing that uh, African banks have to work on it is how to keep the data uh, in their country or at least in the continent. So this is the main topic. How in the future, how can be a bank can be considered as a trusted third party and how they can uh, protect all the data <coughs> that are uh, used by uh, a customer. So in this case, based on this topic, if you look to the current system of the banks, the frequency of the frequency to change their system to evolve evolu uh, to make evolution on the system is, is is quite slow but on the digital part 
on the different mobile application and about what tools are providing, the, the rhythm of change is very, very fast. So the, the main issue that currently banks have is how they can have the good uh, frequency to propose to their customer a new uh, user experience, new products. That's why currently, from the architecture perspective, we put something between the systems of the bank and the, the front. And it's uh, quite uh, similar to what I have presented the, a few minutes before about this kind of platform that is between the IT systems and the customer. And if you took, I don't know if you know Forrester or Gartner, globally, this is the new architecture model that are proposed to banks to mean that you have your core, core data, you have the digital core capabilities, and then you have the front. So there is a um, segregation between the front, the digital business functionalities, and the data. And uh, um, based on the APIs, banks has, have to change their own system in order to be ready to this uh, um, digital transformation. And some banks are not still ready to publish their API. They don't have the good architecture. That's why they are not able to um, today to uh, follow up and to follow the, the speed of some fintechs and, and, and startup. So based on this, a digital banking platform, this is the future, must be design-led mobile first, APA first, and open, which is completely the opposite of the current system of banks. They are not design-led, they are not mobile first, they are maybe API, they have API, but they are not built with API first, and they are not necessarily open. So this is about them. So if we move to the next stage, which is open banking, globally what we explain also to banks is that if you have, if you have the value of a company is equal to the mass of the company and with globally its own ecosystem, which is connection and co-creation. Banks are not used to co-create with fintechs or startup. So we encourage them to do this and to build an ecosystem in order to leverage it to provide the better uh, product and user experience to their customer. So this is the first point, how to build an ecosystem. So. In Sopra, for instance, we, 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 we try to accelerate some fintechs. So we sign NDAs with them, we discover them, we try to build a, a, a proof of concept. And if the proof of concept presented to, to customers is accepted and there is a business case to, to around this, we go to the confirmation phase in order to, to start a, a go to market. So this is a kind of approach that uh, at Sopra Banking we have built. And I give you an example of the result. This is globally the different companies that were working with them as an ecosystem. So there is uh, a digital banking companies, there is alternative channels and open data, there is a lot of payments companies, there is companies on EI, there is company on money transfer. You spoke also in the previous uh, discussion about uh, uh, money transfer uh, abroad and international transfers. So we work on this topic, but we are, we are looking for companies that are already specialized on this topic and we help them to connect to the core banking of the, of the banks. So this is an example of uh, our current ecosystem. And uh, my job, for example, is to continue to have a better ecosystem and a, a regional ecosystem, meaning that we are not looking only to European fintechs, but also uh, African fintechs in order to provide the good use case that respond to the problem locally. So this is the, the approach and we, we are pushing the banks to create their ecosystem. So globally, I will move fast on these topics, but if you take to move to the open banking, you have some steps to respect, like <coughs> to, to move first to publish your own APIs to, and then to have a uh, an open APIs banking strategy. And then the last stage is to build a, a marketplace. So to allow your customer to choose the different products. So for example, if you have a partnership with uh, Jumia, for instance, so Jumia can be part of your marketplace. So your, the, the, the customer of the banks can 
buy on uh, not on Jumia website but on the bank website because they are partner with Jumia and they are fully integrated so you don't need to pay with his card or whatever but he can pay directly from his account so this is some examples and uh, in order to accelerate also what we encourage bank to do to prepare them to the future is to think about what we call the API portal and the developer experience if you want to be to innovate you need to to to, to attract developers so in order to attract the developers you need to provide them apis and they they will uh, um, use these uh, apis to uh, develop their own uh, use cases uh, here i take an example of uh, a lot of banks today in Europe. So as you can see, there is, I think there is no African bank, banks today, but in Europe, they're working a lot about how we, uh, we provide a lot of APIs in order to develop use cases, but also how the developer experience is, is, uh, is filled by the, the, the developer himself. So this is an example of, uh, of banks today. So if, for example, even if you are in Africa, but you want to do business, you can look, for example, to uh, DBS or BBVA in Spain or Starling Bank. So you can connect directly to their website. You have uh, the developer portal. <coughs> you can connect and you have access to their APIs. And then based on your use cases or your business, you can try to connect to the bank system. And if, if, if it's work, you can... Uh, uh, apply to say, okay, I have a very good, very great ID and I have already done the, the connection to your system. Maybe we can uh, talk uh, about it together. So this is an example. This is the future of bank. Banks need to take into consideration the technology as part of the value of the bank. So today, when we open the system, what are the main use cases? And uh, that's why it's quite interesting for, for us in Africa, because if you look a little bit, there is a lot of APIs used for payments, payment account data, non-payment account data, information about accounts, etc., customer data, and generic bank data. All these APIs link to use cases that currently we have in Africa. We use a lot of payment, and we access a lot of data of customer. So it means that um, for all of us, we can uh, provide some use cases around payments. So this is, for example, how, we, how it works. So if I take Africa, regarding open banking, there is three main countries that already have started things. It's not completely uh, finished, but Nigeria have already start, started with an op open technology foundation. So it's a group of uh, banks and experts that try to imagine how we can, they can do open banking. Uh, South Africa, there is a bank, NetBank launch an, an open banking platform. So if you want to do a business in South Africa, you can connect to NetBank and connect to their APIs uh, in order to test if uh, yes or no, you have a good use case that can interest them. And in, in Kenya, there is a company called uh, Co Coxient that collaborates with banks to create the financial services based on open banking approach. There is certainly a lot of uh, other initiative about open banking, but this is the main one that is raising funds that uh, already know on the market. So the future of banks, what it, what it will be if they open their system. So a bank, when they generate a product, when they create a product today, they create a product and they do what we call the distribution of the product on their own uh, uh, tools. And what by tools, what I mean, they can sell the product in the branches, they can sell the product on their website, on their, on their mobile app. You, you never, uh, until now, you cannot see, for example, on Jumia, uh, a link to say, open your bank account and allowing Jumia to do all the process using the KYC of Jumia and then to open a, a bank account. So in the beginning, you have what we can say, traditional banking. They, uh, the product, their own product, and then they distribute their product. But if they open their system, they have more op options. And I have put it some banks here and some companies that have used this already, this, this approach. So if uh, the bank distribute the product of uh, others, it calls a bank as a platform. So the bank become a platform with a multi-industry 
multi products and uh, not necessarily a banking products. It can be uh, e-commerce, it can be insurance, it can be other kind of services. So the bank become a platform. If a bank um, made its own product, but it's distributed by another's others, others company, the bank become a, a marketplace. So a bank have its own product and distribute their product via other companies. And the last one, which is the most complex one, but uh, in already existing what we call a bank as a service it means that the bank can rent its license can rent its it can rent everything and then by renting everything you can um, uh, give the opportunity to people that have a very good idea that have a market to accelerate their their business so this is the the bank of the future a bank will make its his uh, the product, but the distribution of the product can be different, and also the bank can distribute the product of others in other industries. So I will take some example and to be to give you an idea. So I don't know if you know Revolut N26 or Evan Starling Bank. I give you just an idea of N N26. So N26 when it they started, the payment is not managed by N26. It just services provided by another company. Uh, the, for transfer wise, it's for uh, international tra transfer. For insurance, they use the service of Clark. For lending, they use the service of Ox Money. For savings, they use raising. So finally, what is N26? N26, it's the user experience. It's just the app, but they, are they, they, they do not invest on the technology, but they use the existing technology via APIs. So this is how Today, fintechs in banking can accelerate, and this is how also, if I, if you look here to some, uh, to to N26, for example, or even Revolut, this is the the the, the deposit uh, of uh, of of their customers. So as you can see, is is go as the the COVID is very fast. It's an exponential uh, graphic. So it means that the main thing is the ID, and then how to uh, via an ecosystem, how to accelerate the, the, the business. Uh, so here you can see the deposit. So Revolut, they have around 900, uh, I think, uh, million uh, pounds of deposit. And Revolut is just an app. They don't have even any branch. And even on their technology is based on others' technology. Uh, so here it's a different example that, that I can show you. If you take the example of... Uh, bank as a service so if you look to trezor or solaris i take the example of solaris solaris they provide the connection to different to visa to id now to mastercard they provide the products digital bank account card payment services sme and consumer lending blockchain for example and then the new company can just have to to build the brand and then to do the marketing to to, 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 to get new customers. So this is the, the, the next generation of bank. And uh, also if I take Trezor, so what they provide, payments, wallet, marketplace of crowdfunding, cards, uh, acquisition for transaction, KYC. So what, they, what is the, their, uh, what they said, we do banking as a service. So they provide a white label core banking platform that facilitate payment management and give your customer a different experience. So this is also something that already exists. And the, uh, the other one, bank as a service, here you have the, the example of banks that use already their own service. So you have a company called eMoney uh, and uh, the, the, the marketing name is Fashion Check. So it's a solution for prepared car business enabling internalization of partners through eMoney licensing. You have another one, which is Contist, it's a digital banking or auto scoot 24 which is a loan saving for trezor for example i will take this example which is count co2 which is just a payment card program for the first climate friendly local currency to combat global warming so finally this is a small market for people who would like to have accounts that are uh, taking in consideration the global warming of the in the world so 
it's a matter of marketing. So we don't need to invest any more on the technology because it can be provided by other uh, partners. And the last one, I, I found it very, very interesting. It's in uh, Singapore. So the bank, uh, I, I, they said, we do banking, but they have, so if you want also to connect, to test them, it's they call DBS, DBS. They launched the world's largest API developer platform. So you can connect, and if your ID can be uh, useful, I'm quite sure that they can, uh, you can do business with them. So globally, um, the, the experience is completely different. So this is a bank that provides their platform, and uh, the name of the bank was initially Development Bank of Singapore, then changed it to Digital Bank of Singapore. And this is some uh, use cases with the McDonald's, with the uh, 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 Rewards Point, point uh, Partnership, etc., etc. So this is some example. So uh, the future of bank is like this. But if we talk about Africa, how it, all this this approach can be adopted by people? We have done a study in software banking with Forrester, and uh, we have asked banks about uh, how their customer will access to their uh, bank account via digital or mob mobile channels. So here we have Europe, but we have also here Africa. So in Africa, as you can see, the, um, today, uh, only 25% of the customer really use the digital channels to connect to their bank's account. So I'm not talking here about financial inclusion, I'm talking about people that have already accounts. Only 25% of them currently are using the, the digital mobile channel. So we have to take it in, in consideration that the, the usage of digital is still low, but in the next two years, we will reach, based on, on, this, uh, on this study, 26%. So this is, we will do a multiplication about two or three we multiply, uh, of uh, the usage of digital channels. So this is a great opportunity for all of, the, all of us in order to do, uh, to do business. So I, I don't know if you look to, to the IMF, uh, some indicators, but globally, what they said in Africa, Access to mobile phone is around 67%. Uh, um, the usage of account is 42%. So it's all Africa. But what is interesting is use the mobile phone or internet to check account balance is only 10%. So it means that only 10% of the customer really connect to the account via mobile. So before to say, okay, let's change the bank, we have to prepare people to, to, to access more easily to their account. And if you look also to this financial inclusion uh, KPIs, one of them is uh, the financial inclusion index. And uh, the IMF have changed it, changed it and split it into two index. The first one is traditional financial inclusion. Okay. And the second one is the digital financial inclusion. So some of you maybe can be included in this digital financial inclusion based on the access to the service and the usage of the service. And if you look to the evolution during, uh, from 2014 to 17, Africa is the, the continent who has the uh, largest uh, evolution on this uh, digital financial inclusion. So it means that also there is a market, there is a lot of opportunities, and in fact, uh, you need to understand or to try to, to work with banks that have the minimum uh, some APIs and they are ready to, to work with a digital approach. The second one we have also in our study, we have made, let's say, we have built a kind of digital maturity index, meaning how many internet users, mobile connection, bank account, and globally, what we can say is that in North Africa, in South Africa, and, and South Africa, there is a high ma maturity level. When I say maturity, it's also about the banks, uh, that they want to work with, with the fintechs, that they want to work with startups, that they want to do digital projects. And uh, in West Africa and East, East Africa, it's, uh, acceler it's, this maturity is accelerated by mobile money. So during the previous uh, discussion, you said that uh, mobile money is a, is a market changer, so in fact, 
is changing the market in, in East Africa and in West Africa is, is starting to change the market uh, also. But the only region in Africa which is not uh, going very fast is Central Africa, where uh, the infrastructure is, to, is still not ready, where the usage of digital is, to, is still not uh, easy. So when we ask banks in Africa, what are their priorities in 2020? So it's before the COVID also. What they said, we want to master the digital marketing and how to engage our customer. There is in Africa a lot of change on the regulatory uh, aspects. So not, they don't have necessarily the time to invest on digital for the moment because they have to respect a lot of regulation that has been putting in place. And this regulation is, is necessary for the moment in order to um, give more power to the financial system. And then there is how to improve the product agility. Today, banks have a lot of difficulties to create new products. So when you want to work with the startup, it's even more difficult. But today, they have difficulties to, to imagine and to uh, launch new products. In, two, uh, in 2025, when we ask the same question, they have changed. They said, we still want to master the, our digital marketing and engagement, but we want to reduce our cost but we want to start to launch an open banking strategy. So it means that this is the moment to start to work on this topic, on the open banking, and in maybe in five years or even 10 years, it will be something normal. And we know that in Africa, things are going very, very fast comparing to other, the other continents. So maybe in less than three years, it can go faster than we can imagine. So we have to take in consideration the COVID because the COVID is an accelerator uh, himself. So during the COVID also, we have, uh, I have expressed a study of McKinsey. So the bank, what they said, the banks during the COVID, uh, the, the first phase when there is a lot of uh, uh, noise about uh, uh, the lockdown, etc. So globally, they, they, they said, we are not able to serve our customer via digital channels. So less than 30% of them are re really using our digital channels. So this is one of the ch challenge of the banks. How we can uh, be able to launch new products and to uh, be able to do a digital onboarding. So currently in some countries, digital onboarding has been facilitated by the regulation that accept, uh, for example, uh, a video conferencing or a selfie as a as a proof uh, to validate the identity of a, of a customer and then when the same question is what is for africa on short and long term action during this crisis so you have to take in consideration that banks will listen to you if you come with some solution about their main um, uh, issues uh, with this COVID, which is how to digitize and automate the credit process, how to use AI for credit scoring. So this is, and how also to propose them to innovate on, on the credit aspect. So if you have good uh, use cases, good uh, business cases about loans, it's really the time to start to talk with banks because uh, they will need innovation on this topic. The third point is engaging customer. All the banks today, they know that first, a customer will not necessarily go in the branches. Customer maybe will um, uh, use the social network during this crisis because we, we are looking all of us about information. So banks have this uh, issue, how to engage customer, how to develop flexible products, how to digitize high priority customer journey how to scale up digital transformation, how to build for ECMEs. ECMEs are, are forgotten. It's the small and medium entities. How to help ECMEs to uh, go through this uh, crisis. And then how to be able on the mobile finance to offer the same level of services that we can have in the branch. Meaning that I need in the next years, be, I need to be able to open an account, get a new product, request a card, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the, the main challenges on, on, on short term and long term of banks in Africa. This is uh, the, the result of the study. So what you are doing today with the, the FinTech, you are disrupting the market 
also the fintech. So African and non-African fintechs, you have to take it in consideration. There is a lot of non-African fintechs that, that are coming to this market and particularly on the mobile money because their analysis is quite simple. They said there is 500 million mobile money and there is only 200 million banking accounts. And they said there is 1 billion people in Africa. So the market of mobile money is more interesting for fintechs uh, and uh, European or American fintechs than the, banking, uh, than the banking market. So what they provide, uh, they, they want to offer a low cost services and uh, that can be quickly embraced by the population. Low cost is not um, a bad word, it's really to provide a service with uh, the minimum cost. This is the first thing. Then how we can move from traditional financial inclusion to digital financial inclusion. And the main services today that are in Africa, it's digital payment and how to move from payment to microcredit. So this is the two topics. So if you are on payment or microcredit, you have a lot of business to, uh, to, to do. Uh, and the banks will be quite interesting to, in, to incubate you, for example, on these topics. So this is for me the, the presentation. I hope that it was interesting, not too long for you. But this is how we, we see the bank of the future at Sopra Banking Software. And it's also what we said to banks. So if there is some fintechs, some startups that want to be accelerated by Sopra Banking Software, don't hesitate to contact me. And uh, we will see if your use case can be useful for our uh, banks. Thank you very much.